Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use XUnit to test a class and create a unit test for a class. I have this simple payroll class in C Sharp with the properties of gross pay, hourly, and hours. And my function calculates the gross pay in the um, the getter for the for function for the gross pay. Now I've done it wrong. My math is wrong. And I did that intentionally wrong so we can see what happens when we have a bad test. So I've got a nice simple test here and a nice simple class to test. I'm going to create a test to do so. So I'm going to demonstrate how to set up this testing environment in Visual Studio 2022. And then we're going to demonstrate how to create a method that runs before all of the tests. And then we're going to demonstrate how to create a theory tests. All right, so let's add testing to this. Go to your Solution Explorer. Right-click your solution. That's the thing at the very top. I want you to add a new project. And you want to pick your language, all platforms, and test. Here at the top, pick XUnit Test Project. Next it. Give it a good name. Pick your framework, and you end up here. Unit test one is fine. If you want to rename that, you can as well, depending on how many tests you want to have. If you have multiple tests, it's not a good, not a bad idea to rename that. The payroll test. Okay, so now we have to allow this test to see our project. So I go here to my Solution Explorer again. I right-click dependencies on that test. I'm going to add a project reference. I'm going to add this console video. That's the name of my project, right here, here. Adding that dependency it allows my test to see the stuff that's in payroll. And now I'm going to add it to the top here with the using name of my project. If I don't do that, I will not be able to instantiate variables of type payroll, and I won't be able to call the constructor, and I won't be able to call the methods of payroll. All right, so now um, my first tests are going to use the same classes throughout multiple methods. So I'm going to create this prior to the test. Rather than creating them each time in each test, I'm going to create them prior. To do so, I need to create a scenario where I have a constructor for payroll test and a what they call dispose here for your C++ program, you know it as a destructor. So I'm going to implement I disposable here. It's going to yell at you, you need a using system. Now it's still yelling at you because we have to implement dispose. Now you can make it do that simply with that drop. I'm not going to do anything here. Dispose is going to be used. Close down your test. So as an example, if you opened up a database your test, close the database here. Now, you also, with this, can use a constructor. And it's in payroll tests, you set up the test. So I'm going to create a test variable here. I'm going to build it here. I'm writing Java, sorry. So my test case, I'm going to run 20 hours at an hourly rate. Now clearly, if I'm working 20 hours at $10 an hour, I should make 200 bucks. So that's done beforehand. Now, if I had anything needed to close that particular method, I would just kill it and dispose. I don't, but I'm still needed there. So now I'm going to test my gross pay. So let's say test gross pay is correct. Okay. 
We need an assert, an act. I'm sorry, we need a range, an act, and an assert. A range is set up the values, you act, you work on it, and do the math, and assert, you test, see if it's right. So, decimal expected equals 200. Act. Look at that. It's smart enough to know what I want. I love Visual Studio. That's some actually we call test case dot gross pay. I'm gonna assert it. Expected actual. Since I've already set out my hours here, this math works. If I hadn't built my payroll test, I would have had to put these three lines of code here inside my test. Now, that's not bad, but if when you have 30 or 40 tests off the same class, that starts to slow your test down over that constant you know, re-implementing of a class. Um, we're going to add another fact test here. Because when you're writing unit tests, you really should test as much of your class as possible. I know that comprehensive testing is impossible, but I have two functions like Tezos. And again, assert, act, I'm sorry, arrange, act, assert. Let's do it right. There's my local tax right here. So I need some decimals in here. So let's do the act. The ad here is really scary. It knows I want to test my local taxes. Local taxes depends upon that variable passed in. That'll be tax rate. And if you didn't know that, since we're using a white test here, we can see it takes that function. This isn't a black box test. Asserts. Equal expected. All right, so here are your tests. This is my unit test. I've got two f functions I care about, local taxes and the gross pay getter. So I test those. You can test setters for all of them if you want, and constructors for all of them you want. Usually that's not necessary because you know, these were generated. You know, it's really hard to mess these up. If you'd written these by hand or the special code of them, then test them. If they're just default setters and getters, no need to test them. Test, run all my tests. I'm expecting these to pass. You always expect your test to pass, but you're always surprised when it doesn't. Okay, practice tests ignore that because that's something I had in the last runs. Just ignore it. We'll look at these tests my payroll class. So both my tests pass. Okay, so now we need to do this again for overtime pay. You know, overtime pay is more complicated than straight pay. Now, I could just simply copy and paste these and call again and rebuild this, but I'm going to do this right. Okay, I'm going to build a theory. A theory is a way to repeat these tests. All right, so um, I'm going to modify these facts and turn them into theories. Theory, as I said, is a way to run multiple tests at the same time. So... What you'll do is you'll change fact to theory. You'll then create a series of data points you pass in into the function, and you'll modify the function to accept those data points. So what's going to occur here is I'm going to do these settings inside of each one of these tests in the arrange section. I'm going to comment these out up here in payroll tests. I'm not using those anymore. I'm going to change this to a theory. But with theory, you have to have an inline data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the hours, the hourly, 
and the expected. And I'll do this as many times as I need. The hours, hourly, expected. Now it's yelling at me because test gross pay is correct, doesn't accept these values. So I said these were hours. I better lowercase those are also to get confusing. The rates and the expected. Since I'm passing the expected in, this function or that variable declaration go away. And I'll use my globally de declared test case to set the values. Call my test case, see if it's equal. It's almost the exact same setup for test local taxes is correct. I'll pass in a different answer. So I'll take these, put them down here. Change fact to theory. And again, I'm going to pass in the same numbers, 20, 10. This time I'm expecting 7. Fifty, ten, 19.25. I've done this math off screen. Right there. So I'm way ahead of myself. You should, of course, know these things. Likewise, as a passing expected, I can get rid of this. The rest of my test case sets up the same because I built this nicely. But I do need to do my setters. And now, instead of two tests, now I have four tests. The test engine will distribute this inline data to my function, run it, and then distribute this data to my function and run it. You may have a thousand of those. This is better than putting arrays inside of here because in the array, this becomes one test. Here, each one of these become an independent test. And one set of data may pass and the other will fail. And that's what's going to happen here. My straight pay is going to pass. My overtime should fail. So I'm going to go to test, run all tests. Again, ignore practice tests. And look at that payroll test fails. Expected 550 got 750. Expected 1925 got 26.25. And the reason, of course, is my payroll function is wrong. I just simply multiply everything times the overtime rates. In reality, it's this. Parentheses there. It's only on the rate that's overboard. So that should solve my problem, assuming I did all my math right. So what we just showed there was red green refactor. I'm refactoring. Okay, I still got some math issues there. Um, we can fix that off screen. But the idea is your test now is letting you know that your math is wrong in your payroll. So now you got to come here and figure it out. All right, so beautiful. You've learned how to create functions that run before your tests. You've learned how to create a function that runs after your test. And you've learned how to create a theory test that will create multiple tests for your class. All right, thank you for watching. Good luck.